Tonight on the Mike Tomlin Show, the Steelers are set for another primetime appearance for Week 15, an AFC North meeting with the Bengals. After two losses in a row, the team wants to bring back its physicality as it looks to lock up the division title. Coach Tomlin joins Bob Pompiani to review the loss in Buffalo and look ahead to Monday night in Cincinnati. Plus a special honor for Vance McDonald and I go one-on-one -on -one with Avery Williamson. The Mike Tomlin Show starts right now. Here we go. This pass is caught and that's a touchdown. That's the way to work. Come on. He's hit that sack. The Steelers win the football game. Let's go. Come get it. You know what it is. This one is in the history books. Here we go. The Mike Tomlin Show is presented by 84 Lumber. Hi, everybody. I'm Missy Matthews. Welcome to the Mike Tomlin Show presented by 84 Lumber. The streak that the Steelers are currently on is not the kind of streak that they like. After winning their first 11 games of the season, they dropped their last two, including most recently in Buffalo on Sunday Night Football. You can name a number of reasons like changes to their schedule or injuries, but anyone around the team says they need to get back to playing a physical style of football. Let's check in tonight with Bob Pompiani and Coach Tomlin for more. All right, Missy, thanks very much. We welcome in head coach Mike Tomlin. And uh, coach, I'm going to throw a Tomlinism at you to start, I guess. And you've said this before, and I think it may apply here, that uh, the windshield is bigger than the rear view mirror. Is that sort of how you have to conduct business at this point? Man, that's always, that's business as usual for us. Um, you know, we're shaped by our experiences, but the ones that, uh, the experiences that define us are the ones that lie ahead. And so, uh, obviously, you got to learn from your experiences, and that's why you have the purposes of the rear view. But, but moving forward at all times is just an element of life in our game. Yeah, this has been a strange season, no doubt, with the COVID interruptions and whatever. Uh, you're coming off two losses in a row, and you were quick to remind people back when you were undefeated that the only thing perfect with us is our record. 11-2 and two still sounds pretty good. Does it feel like 11-2? and two? You know, I don't know how it feels. I'm not necessarily looking for the feel good. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm problem and solution oriented. I like to identify problems and identify them quickly and then work towards solutions in the midst of those two losses. We've identified some areas of needed improvement, and so that's where my attention is, has been the last several days. Well, since you've identified them, what would be number one on your list? It seems like you know, the run game, the offensive line, the short passing game, all those things have come into uh, you know, some problem areas right now. What would be the thing you're working on this week and ahead of this game against Cincinnati? You know, just general physicality, um, and, and I think some of the things that you mentioned would fall into that. Um, you know, Buffalo was more physical than us. Um, and, and not only um, in terms of the front as it relates to our, our offensive run game, but I just thought in general, they were the more physical group in, in all three phases. And, and they are a physical group. That is a signature of their play. Uh, but that's tr troublesome to us because we always want to check that box be regardless of circumstance. But they were the more physical group. Uh, we got we to gotta re redefine ourselves in that way to make sure that we're not saying that again moving forward. And for me, you know, all, all discussions kind of start there. Let's talk a little bit about the short passing game because it was uh, working very well and almost took the place of a run game that had been stagnant. Uh, but lately, not so much. It's almost as if defenses are, are making it difficult because they're coming up man on man coverage, uh, jamming at the line of scrimmage. What do you do to try to change that dynamic? You know, that's just, you know, kind of an element of play this time of year. Um, you know, defenses get familiar with what offenses do, particularly situationally, and they make calls accordingly. Um, and so it makes operation more challenging. But also in the midst of that time, offenses gain continuity and cohesion and better understanding. And so, you know, it's reasonable to ask our guys to make plays under the circumstances in which you mentioned. And I think that's where the answers lie for us. Um, you know, we need better execution. Uh, we need more comprehensive plans to combat the techniques that you mentioned. So it's about all of us ratcheting up elements of our play. Um, not anything significant or earth shattering or sweeping, uh, but the subtle things that allow uh, execution to happen. The first six games of the year, we saw a run game that was averaging 130 a game, uh, 4.1, I think, the yards per carry. It's not been that way. In fact, it's uh, trended toward the bottom of the NFL. Uh, can you pinpoint a problem area there? Is it physical up front in the trenches? Is it Personnel, what do you think it may be? You know, usually uh, it's a myriad of things. In this, it, in this instance, it is. Um, you know, we, we haven't 
um, dealt with the, you know, the adversity that a season or, or these circumstances present. It seems like we're, we, we're not able to uphold a standard when we're missing a piece or two, and um, that's not how we're built. So it's important that, that we understand that regardless of who's available and who's not, there's a certain standard of expectation. But also, um, you know, we just haven't been, been thorough enough or, or competent enough either in planning or and or execution. And so, you know, we're all making, uh, we're all taking an account for that and we're all rolling our sleeves up and working diligently uh, to improve it. It's not something that we haven't identified already and have continued to work to improve on. We're just not seeing the results yet. It shouldn't lessen our intensity in terms of our work and our focus in terms of our effort in that area, and it hasn't. We saw last week that Jalen Samuels got more snaps than James Conner or Chase Claypool. That by design, or was it just something that you thought would be working in that game against Buffalo? You know, it's, it's how the game unfolded. Um, you know, James had missed a significant amount of time. Um, you know, he got banged up a little bit in game. Uh, it, it makes his availability this week a questionable one. It just will be based on his ability to perform in practice and what the quality of that looks like. And so over the course of those events and how the nature of the game was unfolding, it provided an opportunity for Jalen. One final thing, and that would be your defense. I thought given everything you had to overcome there with injuries, they played a pretty solid first half. Things changed in the second half, but I thought the pick six was something that changed the dynamic. Did On the sideline, did it feel that way, like that was a game-changing moment? Well, you know, plays like that, you know, um, pick sixes, uh, touchdowns by non-offensive units, block kicks, they're always significant plays that have the potential to be the defining play or plays of the game. Uh, it's our job to, to spend the rest of the time working to, to minimize the impact of that play and make it irrelevant. We weren't able to do that. Um, I didn't feel a letdown in game on the sideline. Uh, we understand that. We understand how important it is to respond to those plays. We just weren't able to do so. And so as you look back at it, for sure, that was a defining moment. All right, the Steelers have an opportunity to clinch a division championship coming up Monday night against Cincinnati. When we come back, Coach Tomlin will talk about the Bengals, who are struggling, but they have some playmakers on both sides of the ball. That's still to come. Right now, let's head over to Miss. Thanks, Bob. And just like last week, the Steelers can clinch the AFC North without even playing if the Browns lose to the Giants on Sunday. If not, the Steelers need to take care of business with the Bengals to get their first AFC North division title since 2017. Still to come here on the Mike Tomlin Show, my one-on-one -on -one with Avery Williamson, who was the next man up in Buffalo. We'll be right back. Welcome back, everyone. Two of the Steelers' final three games are going to be against division opponents, starting with this week, Monday night in Cincinnati against the two 10-1 Bengals. They no longer have Joe Burrow as their quarterback due to injury, and the Steelers desperately need to get back to their winning ways. Let's go back to Bob and Coach for more on this week's primetime matchup. Bob? Hey, Missy, thanks very much. Coach Tomlin is back talking about the next opponent. This is a big week. Despite what's happened, Coach, you have an opportunity to clinch a division. And at the beginning of the year, I know that's always a check mark. That's a box you want to make sure you have in your, uh, your control, and you have that opportunity this week. It's a team that struggled in Cincinnati, but there's a carrot out there, and I know you want to get it. Yeah, for us, um, it's not a box to check. It is the first box to check. If you want to dominate the National Football League and be that team or – be in contention to be that team. It starts first with division dominance for us. Uh, we're heading into our fifth divisional game. We have an opportunity to, to close out the AFC North action, and that is a big box to check for us. And it's also an opportunity for us to remain undefeated in divisional play, um, and that's something that we are excited about as well. Joe Burrow was their man, uh, and boy, what a season he was having. He was trending on beating a rookie record that – had been in uh, control of Andrew Luck, and then it, you know, changed so drastically. You know, I know you're a fan of football. When you see something like that happen, it's got to make you cringe, knowing that guy was their future and is their future. Yeah, you hate it for him. Uh, you, you hate it for their, their organization and their fan base, and really, you hate it for football. Um, significant guys that are doing significant things uh, is good for the game. Uh, it's entertaining for those of us that love the game. Uh, is, is, is competition for those of us that desire to be in the hot kitchen and appreciate the competitive aspects of play. Um, and so there's a lot of reasons that it's significant, and you're right, uh, your heart goes out to him and, and, and all parties involved. 
But you still have to coach against this team, and they've been using a couple of guys at quarterback. How do you prepare this week for whomever it may be? Well, we're preparing for B. Allen. He's the most experienced guy um, in, in their outfit. Um, he's got a past relationship with Coach Taylor. I think those are the things that they're leaning on. Um, he's been much more efficient with each outing. Uh, last week is an indication of that. I think he completed 75% of his balls. Um, if they're not putting the ball on the ground uh, last week, man, he, he's going to have that group um, in striking distance in that game. And so those are the things that we're looking at and respecting the fact that he's capable of and, and preparing with an edge with that understanding. And he has some weapons, too. We've talked about Tyler Boyd, but Higgins has really come on. I mean, he has, at last check, a, a double-digit 20-yard gains. Uh, he's a big play uh, maker, and your defense, I would imagine, would be uh, looking at those guys as people you have to stop. Yeah, taking nothing away from T. Higgins, he's a, a talented young player and a big-bodied guy who makes big-bodied guy catches. Um, but a lot of people get opportunities because of the attention required to minimize Tyler Boyd and his impact on the game. Uh, we talked about him last time. We'll talk about him anytime we play him. Uh, that former Pitt Panther is a quality player, one of the one of the elite interior slot receivers in situational ball and really in all circumstances. Um, he's a splash playmaker. He went 72 yards a couple of weeks ago early in that Dolphin game before he got involved in an altercation. Uh, we're always ready, and we need to be, in terms of minimizing Tyler Boyd and his impact on the football game. The Cincinnati defense has struggled. I'm just looking potentially as, as a, maybe a tonic for your offense this week. Uh, they give up 4.6 yards per carry. They also have given up 25 touchdown passes. Uh, you look at that as an opportunity to get better uh, from your offensive standpoint. You know, I don't measure us against those that we compete against. I measure us against us and the quality of our execution and the formulation of plans and so forth. So I don't necessarily look at it from that perspective. I look at what they do well and what we need to be concerned about in preparation. And as I look at them, I see a safety tandem that's playing really well. I can't say enough about Jesse Bates and the splash that he's providing them. Uh, he is the turnover catalyst for them. He is playing, in my opinion, at a Pro Bowl level. Uh, he's adding to his repertoire because of the versatility of Von Bell. I think they have more versatility with the Von Bell um, tandem along with him. Uh, you'll see him down more in the box some. I saw him in some blitz packages last week against the Dallas Cowboys. Um, I like the growth and development of that tandem and the direction that that tandem is going. And, and we better be ready to minimize their impact on the game, and particularly Jesse Bates, and be cognizant of what he's capable of. We were fortunate the last time we played those guys. He had his hands on a couple of balls uh, that he wasn't able to bring in that could have changed the trajectory of that football game. They're a team that's been out of it, but I imagine one of the things that would make their season is a win against you guys. So um, talking about your team, how you get them prepared, it's a Monday night game. There's always a lot of excitement about night games at this point, and the fact that you can win a division, uh, I would imagine the motivation and juices will be flowing in this game. Man, we get another primetime opportunity. Um, you know, we didn't do very well last week in our primetime opportunity. We're excited about that. We have respect for that. We understand what that means. And so we're excited about Monday Night Football and an opportunity to, to secure a divisional championship uh, to do so uh, against a rival uh, is, is enough exciting things for us for sure. It's the Steelers and the Cincinnati Bengals coming up on Monday night. Again, a chance to win an AFC North. That's always excitement around here. When we come back, final word from Mike Tomlin. Right now, let's send it back over to Missy. Okay, thanks, guys. And on Monday, quarterback Ben Roethlisberger has a chance to pass some pretty special milestones. With just four pass completions, Roethlisberger will reach 5,000 in his career. And if he has 163 passing yards, he'll hit the 60,000 mark. The Mike Tomlin Show continues right after this. The Mike Tomlin Show is presented by 84 Lumber. Are you 84 Lumber material? Visit 84lumber.com slash careers to learn more. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to the Mike Tomlin Show presented by 84 Lumber. The depth at the middle of the Steelers defense was definitely tested heading into the Buffalo game. It required a new player to wear the green dot and to be the communicator for the unit. Here's my one-on-one -on -one this week with Avery Williamson, who was the next man up. So many injuries at the inside linebacker position. Uh, when the Steelers traded for you, Coach Tomlin said, you know, he is depth. We are going to maybe need him at some point. And it seemed like it was perfect where you had a few weeks 
in the books to be comfortable. You wore the green dot in Buffalo. What was that process like going in knowing that you were the guy? Uh, yeah, it was. I was a little nervous, you know, at first, uh, you know, especially when, when Vince went down and, um, you know, just didn't, you know, wasn't expecting that. So, um, but I mean, I just made sure I was, you know, prepared as well as I could, know the calls and just make sure I could get the defense set up well and uh, just try to go out there and play as fast as possible. But, I mean, I feel like I did, did a pretty solid job for the most part, you know, definitely wasn't perfect, but uh, just, just going to try to go out there and improve uh, next, this, this upcoming week. But, um, you know, it just, this is uh, a part of this game, you know, you never know what to expect. Injuries, uh, and, and then with COVID this year, just never, you know, never can really predict, you know, what's gonna happen week to week. I know you guys use hand signals as well, but wearing the green dot, what's the key to being a good communicator, especially you guys were on the road. I know there weren't fans, but you still weren't in the comforts of Heinz Field. Uh, I'd say the main, the main thing, you know, for, for me is just, uh, if you're wearing a green dot, just making sure that, you know, you're keeping your cool, especially when, you know, guys are like, what's the call? Um, or if we get a call in late, just to make sure that you don't panic. Um, just making sure that you're, you know, you're, you're communicating clear as possible and being loud. Who is the guy on the defense that you kind of go to when you have a question about something that you're still trying to learn or need a little clarification on? Uh, Rob, Rob Spillane, he's been a huge help for me. Uh, he's He's definitely uh, he's he done a good job, you know. Since I got here, uh, he was he was uh, she was, uh, one of the first ones to reach out to me, and um, you know to try to help me out with defense. So uh, I definitely go to him if I have a question. He's he uh, knows the defense well, and uh, he's he's been a huge uh, asset for me since I've been here. A lot of us have asked TJ about missing Bud Dupree now that he is out for the season. You guys have a history, of course, uh, and you knew him. It was kind of like your friend you had in Pittsburgh when you came to the Steelers. What has it been like not having him out on the field, and do you still keep, you know, in communication with him and that kind of thing? Yeah, yeah. Um, it, I mean, it definitely sucks, you know, to, to not have him out there. I mean, from a from a um, you know friendship standpoint and a player standpoint, you know, he was. Doing a great job, having a great year, and I um, mean he's he was a huge, you know, huge uh, addition to this defense. So um, yeah, he's definitely definitely missed, and um, but he's definitely doing good. Staying, I'm staying in communication with him, and uh, he's you know he's in the building, you know, getting rehab and stuff. So it's it's good just to see him around and uh, just to see him in good spirits. You guys finally have a normal week, actually an extra day since you play on Monday night in Cincinnati. What has this week been like in terms of trying to refocus and get out of this rut with two losses in a row? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely good that we, you know, we finally got a normal week. You know, it's, it's definitely been pretty hectic, you know, with, with just the the rescheduling of the games and uh, just kind of, the, you know, it's just been a little bit crazy. So uh, it's kind of just like a, a side relief to you know have a, a extra day or two you know what I'm saying just to just to rest so uh, it's definitely been good but um I feel like you know everybody definitely um need the rest and uh, we're just gonna you know make sure that we're resetting in practice you know make sure that we're trying to correct any mistakes that we have and just to so we can get ready to go out and get this win against Cincinnati we're not done yet here on the Mike Tomlin Show. When we return, Coach Tomlin gives us his final thoughts on his players' impact in the community, including a special honor for tight end Vance McDonald. The Mike Tomlin Show is presented by 84 Lumber. Vance, I know you probably do not take this honor lightly. What does it mean to you to be one of the 32 nominees throughout the league? Yeah, it's, I'm almost hesitant to use the word honor because I feel like, you know, that's probably everyone's answer. But, you know, I remember when I was presented with the news, I, I, you know, I've been here for four years now and I know, I know the, the guys in the locker room, you know, this, we have a strong group of guys that give back, you know, so much. And, uh, you know, to be honored for this year's award, man, I, I don't really know what to say, honestly. It's just an amazing, it's an amazing feeling, an amazing thing, especially there's just so there's so much energy and effort um, that just goes into it all, and um, you know it, it, it's just that whenever I was presented the award, man, it was just like that affirmation, man, that just makes you feel like okay, I'm on the right track here. So it was great. 
And that, of course, was Vance McDonald discussing the honor of being the Steelers nominee for the Walter Payton Man of the Year Award. And it's no secret that the Steelers and its players place an emphasis on helping others. So let's check in one final time with Bob and Coach for more on that. Guys. All right, Missy, thanks very much. We're here with uh, Mike Tomlin and final note. And once again, I know you guys take a lot of pride in your players getting involved in community activities. And the Steelers nominee for the Walter Payton Man of the Year, which is a tremendous honor, uh, reflecting a tremendous man in Walter Payton, is Vance McDonald. Uh, you brought him over here. Uh, he's been a contributor to your team, but he also does a lot in the community. And I'm sure as a head coach, you must be proud. Really proud of Vance and excited that he's representing us in that way. Can't say enough about him, not only in terms of what he does in the community, uh, but just the, the low maintenance and supportive teammate that he is. Um, his role has changed a lot during the course of 2020 because of the acquisition of, of, of Eric Ebron. Uh, but this guy uh, is there for us at every turn, works extremely hard, um, is really selfless in his play, and really deserving of the honor. Yeah, he is. He's one of those guys, and you have a lot of them, right? I mean, you, you have guys who are always out there, especially at this time of the year. I notice an, an uptick on all the involvement of your players. Man, they embrace the responsibility uh, that's be, that comes with being a Pittsburgh Steeler in this community, and, and they're simply following, following the path that's been laid for them by the Steeler greats uh, that have come before him, before them who have also embraced it. All right, Coach, wish you all the best. Have an opportunity to win a, a division and then go from there. Thanks for your time as always. Good luck in Cincinnati. Thank you. All right, that's going to do it for our program tonight. Thanks for joining us. We will have much more coming up this week. And then after the Cincinnati game, a couple of more games to go in the AFC with Indianapolis and Cleveland to round it out. And then it's time for the postseason. Steelers have qualified. They'd love to get that division championship. We will wrap up the show on that note. Thanks for joining us. Hope you have a great holiday week. For Coach Mike Tomlin and Missy Matthews, I'm Bob Pompiani. We'll see you tomorrow morning, 11.30 a.m. for the Steelers kickoff show on KDKA. Have a good week.